This is the platform. Let's talk about it. What up, though? I'm your boy, Doe. What up, man? It's far as you, man. Let's talk about it, man. Thank you for being here to participate. You know what I'm saying? Let's get to it, man. Let's, Let's get, get to it. it. We're going to call some people and talk about um, a man. issue that's never... Um, Let's do an interactive one. Real that, quick. that, um... What y'all want to talk about? But I thought you was going to... Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, so um, what it was going to say, what is you doing, boy? What y'all um, What y'all want to talk about? Y'all can tell us what y'all want to talk about Shoot too. Shoot the subject. We will be going through it. But what? What? But one thing we was gonna talk about, which never gets old, you can't never talk about it enough, is how is um us us black and brown people. I'm even just say black, even though I love the brown people too. But just right. talk about us, you know, just right for, now for a, se for a brief second. We um us black people get kidnapped or go missing or whatever else you want to call it. Organ um. Um, Man, they get they get organ harvested, all that type of stuff. All that, all that. But soon as somebody else go missing, they get to looking for them right away. They don't right bring the SWAT team in and blah blah like blah. The, the FBI gets called in. All that. And don't get it wrong, everybody's life is important. But that's the reason why we say Black Lives Matter, even though we don't condone that group. But yeah. the reason why we say that though is because they forget that our lives matter. The thing, the thing about it, right, is like let's talk about financial growth and development. Yes, indeed. Yes, we indeed. That too. Indeed. We can do that, but um, we want to touch on um, the missing, the missing women and men, right? So in Chicago right now, man, like it's an epidemic going on, not only in the city of Chicago, Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul, like uh, this, this stuff is happening across the whole country, where young women, young men are coming up missing, and they are not getting uh, the publicity or the care that the standard society would give them. So like. Being black, brown, indigenous, what you know what I mean? What what we are, you know what I mean? When when individuals from our community come up missing, there is not the response that's needed in order to make sure that these individuals are found in a timely manner, or to see if these individuals are ever found. Period. So we want to touch on that, man. It's an interesting topic, man. I know it's guys out here that got daughters, you got sons. You know what I mean? If something happened to your child or something happened to you personally, um, you would want individuals to take the time out to find you. So today, on this platform, let's talk about it. We are going to reach out to a family that has been dealing with it. My personal family, but I'm not going to get too deep, you know what I mean, because I don't want to disclose too much information. If you want to know, you can definitely do the research on Jerrica Laws. Um, but we're going to reach out to my big sister, um, and and kind of see what's going on, you know what I mean? It's a lot going on in this world. We have families that have loved ones that come up missing. So why not talk to somebody that's had to deal with this tragedy, man? I've, I've had to deal with it, but nobody could feel the pain that my, my big sister feels after something like this. So how do you guys feel about it? Like, uh, Do you know of anybody that has been, you know, came up missing or know of anybody that's been struggling with this or a family that's been dealing with this where... They have not been able to find that loved one, you know. And in my opinion, it needs to be more resources spent on being able to assist families and reconnect them with their loved ones. So let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. We're about to make a quick phone call. Check this out. Uh, okay, we're gonna call back. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna talk about Jericho Laws. Oh look, look, I just um I was just finna go live on my Facebook and I see a post that say, and this is St. Paul, Minnesota. It say, keep your eyes on a black man in a white van with tinted windows. My daughter just ran in the house saying he tried to tell her to come here. By the time I went outside, he was already gone. She said he's wearing a black hoodie. So Minneapolis. And that was five, five hours ago. Minneapolis be on the lookout for a black male. In a white van with black windows, yeah. uh, just tried to abduct a young lady in North Min in Minneapolis. No, this is St. Paul. This is St. Paul, so please be careful out there. Um, right now, I just made a call in. How you doing, Sean? Sean? Hi. What's up, Sean? How you doing? You live on um, the Let's Talk About It show. Uh, we kind of did a little introduction as to what's going on. I'm going to have to put my phone over here so the world can hear you. 
But we did a brief introduction about, you know, Jericho Laws and, you know, what's going on and wanted to kind of get your insight and your opinion on what's been going on and, you know, the trend of what's happening in our society. Are you there? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Well, welcome to the show, Miss Lady. No problem. So we briefly went over uh, what, what's been going on with Jericho Laws, um, you know, little sister, um, and wanted to kind of get your thoughts on what's been happening in society in regards to, you know, um, black and brown, and the, you know, men, men and women coming up missing and not getting the same response. That's right. That's so true. Um, the song blanked out. I guess I have a bad connection. I'm not sure. But yeah, you're talking about how um, the media yes. actually does, or even the police departments actually get their resources for um, people that's not of color. Right. You know, um, I've been in the, you know, watching the news and the um, Gabby Patino and um, Brian, you know, they, they, uh, and I, I just, found that there was it's a disadvantage for when they start looking for African American people, if they ever stop. So, you know, for, for one thing, they let, you know, they went to his parents' home and they didn't do anything, you know, after her parents reported her missing. And honestly, in my house, we were the prime suspects and they never went to go look for my daughter. Wow. Never. So, in, in the in the situation that we, we are discussing in regards to Shantan, I mean to uh, Jericho Laws, you're saying that the police did not even show this but anywhere near that amount of care or concern no. for what was happening? Not at all. Because she was an adult and Gabby was an adult too, just to make some comparisons. Right. And the two young ladies, they told me um, that they didn't actively search. The reason why they even came to my house was after the people started calling. I asked my family and friends on Facebook, actually, to start calling the police so they can actively look for her and do something as it relates to her case. Wow. But they wouldn't even take the case seriously because they told me she was an adult. Wow. So in the yeah. case, it, when, when family members report their loved ones missing, the police departments do not actively investigate those cases. In fact, they are reluctant to even follow up on the situation. Has there been, I, has there been any follow up? Well, um, I, just this year, and this, this marked the six year anniversary of her disappearance. Six years. Six years. Six years. This year, the Cook County Sheriff's Police actually formed a division to actively, um, to open cold cases, if you will. And what has happened with that is they came and did an interview. And they are going back with a fine to comb over her case details. But I even, I mean, even getting her on websites, because it was an open and active case, I had to get the, the... the approval of the police department was served to be very frustrating for me. Wow. I asked them to engage the FBI and they said no. They they couldn't. The, the, the one thing they did about three or four years later was put her picture on the FBI website and that was it. So, the re- go ahead. In, in regards to the case, in regards to the case, so you made a plea to the police officers or the district uh, in which this happened to reach out to the FBI for support, and they, they pretty much said that they could not provide that support? Yeah. They went as far as, I, I got in touch with a group called Nameless. Um, What's the name? Can you say that? Can you say that name of that group one more time for us? Nameless. Uh, N-A-M-U-S. Nameless. Nameless, yeah. Nameless. So for the, for the viewers that are online, please, you know, take notes of the information that's being shared right now. This is coming from my big sister, um, you know, Pam, family personally had to, you know, deal, deal with the fact that the police are not actively investigating a, a, a missing person case the way that they should in, in our community. So, yeah. 
But I contacted Damon. I did a lot of Google searches for Missa to just get her picture out there and trying to get the the um, resources online in order to look for my baby, you know. And NamUs is the National Missing and Unidentified Person System. Mm. They agreed to do her DNA and have it turned around to the police within 48 hours. Okay. However, my police department decided they were not going to use NamUs, and I had a person that was working directly with me at NamUs. They said they were going to send her DNA through the channels of Cook County. Okay. And we did not get the DNA back. At least it had to be a year and a half. When I could have had the DNA right away. Wow. Man. So it was. I mean, it, you know, and they they actively cannot. My heart goes out to Gabby's family. I, it really <clears> does, because <throat> losing a child or a child is lost, it hurts. Right. I right. Get it. But the resources they used to find that lady, they didn't use that with my baby. Right. And, and that's 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 what we want to touch on is is that discrepancy. And so let me ask this, and even though it shouldn't matter at all, period, but do we think that them services is getting paid for? Like far as you know, like I don't know, do they offer any services to the victims? Do they say, well, if you pay this, we could do this, or do they even offer stuff like that? This stuff should be free, to be honest. Yes, you're right. But do it's but free. but do they do they do have do, I don't know. I'm just like do they? No, do they that? didn't ask me to pay for anything because I would put my house on the market to pay for family, my baby. Okay, okay. so I, yeah, I was just wondering if they do that. No. So so the discrepancy lies not. In being able to offer or put up money, but the discrepancy lies in them being able to provide the resources for the families, depending upon where their zip code lies or the or the color of their skin, for the most part. To say it all the way for real, uh, it, it, it's unfortunate, but I believe it's the color of the skin. Right. I mean, even in my community. So she got people saying they would help. interested in the most diabolical side of this. It's, it's a possible conspiracy theory, but in my honest opinion, maybe the police are involved in some of these things that are happening in our communities. Definitely. Like, Definitely. how are these things occurring in our communities and we're not seeing no struggles? We're not see, We're not hearing nobody screaming for help. We're not, you know what I'm saying, not, not even, you know, being aware of all of these people that are just coming up missing. So at some point, maybe, you know, is there somebody that is voluntarily getting people to come towards them without a struggle? Is are, are people not screaming? Who who are the individuals that are vested in 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 the in the, in the, in the well being of missing girls? I don't I don't think it's the fact that they're not you and, know, like, miss, and missing young men. Somebody is vested. Somebody vested in this. Or oh, if, if, if they wasn't vested, definitely. this wouldn't be able to go on the way it is. Yeah, I don't think it's um, like things of the nature of nobody sees or nobody hears or nothing like that. I think it's all the above, but, you know, like you just said, somebody, obviously if we're talking about um, organ uh, harvest and stuff of that nature, Man. then, you know, of course there's people that's in power definitely involved, they invest, you know, and some, so it, that goes from back to like anything in life, like selling crack or drugs or whatever, you get big enough, you can pay off... The local police, probably not the feds. That's, but, and that's why they you know, didn't want to like get the, that, the feds know? involved. You know what I mean? It's like, why wouldn't you want the assistance of the federal government to find somebody's child? Really? It, it, I mean, it just doesn't make no sense to me. And why would you not 
come with all the resources that you could possibly have to make sure that the family is realigned with their loved one. You know? Right. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I had a visit person since in 2018. Right. So the police not capable of tracking down 25 little girls on top of the young men and they don't want to call in the FBI? It, it's something to that. They did not. It's and tracking phones. I don't know how they found Gabby. But for one... The phones found cameras. For one... For one the police told me, well, this is not like CSI on television. But for one yeah. white girl... For, oh, man, for one white crazy. girl... They call the sheriff, the police, the FBI, but for 25 black girls, they did no. not in involve the FBI on one case. That's right. See, now, now, now that, that's, a, that's a goddamn problem. See, now, that's why that, that's, that's a problem. And look, and that's what made me ask about the um, paying thing, because oh you just said the same, so you just said something. You just said, um, they told you this was a CSI, right? So they, so, so they, I mean, being on, sarcastic too, though. Right? right, but let me say this real quick. And that's the reason why I was asking and wondering, like, I wonder, is people paying for that day? Because I was thinking that, like, you know, on TV, every blue moon person can get that kind of service. So for them to tell you this ain't CSI, that means they're not, they're not even providing that. So how do you turn around providing for somebody else then? Because she was a white girl. But if, but if you sit there and tell she, she somebody to say CSI, she, but then they, turn around and do CSI. They get smart with us. So so there's this wow. there's this disconnect. I, I mean I had a, a wow. detective at the time. Um, I don't want to say verbatim. I'm not gonna use profanity, but he called me and he said, Well, I was on the floor of Jericho's room crying. And they had just finally left my house after I think it was the fourth day of her missing. And he said, how are we going to look for your daughter and answer media calls? And he, he used profanity and hung up in my face. What? I reported the detective at the time. They covered for him. He, he got promoted. Wow. Promoted. In my same, he got promoted. And I reported what he said to me to the sergeant. But they have a code of their brothers in blue. I'm telling you, they stick together. That's I mean, wild. I was in the station one time to go over her case because I stayed at that station. 
You hear me? Right. I wasn't going to turn no, I wasn't going nowhere until they found my baby. And I heard the officers talking about a lady who reported her car stolen. The words they used to describe this woman was just a mess. You hear me? I never would have thought that they would talk about this lady whom I didn't know like that. Wow. Then they walk past the exam room. Oh, someone's in there, and that would be me. Wow. They whole tune changed after that. Wow. But to hear them, that lady called in because a car was stolen. It don't matter who stole the car. Right. Her son, her brother, boyfriend, whomever. She reported her car stolen. But she was everything under the sun. Wow. Wow. And these are the people that police our community. Wow. They don't even the detective that was on my case lived in uh, Frankfurt. I oh. live in Parkwood, Frankfurt. It's a nice area. But he's able to police my, com- my community. Right. And it makes sense. They all stick together, I'm telling you. Wow. They harass my family. It makes wow. it not a good experience at all. But wow. I told the detective, I told the chief, I told him, I don't care what you do. I never moved it from my address. My phone number will still be the same until you find my baby, unless I die first. I ain't going nowhere. And I'm still here. That's yeah. power. That's power. My heart goes out to you, Queen, yeah, and I'm, I'm very. Um, I send my condolences. Um, well, no, it ain't no condolences. No. Sorry, condone but no. We gonna pray this yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, my heart just goes out to her. We do. Um, find her and you get some closure wow. and some peace. Wow. And, and, and thank you for being brave enough to stand up and keep fighting and, you know. This, this I mean, it just gets so tricky, man, mm-hmm. because these boys will back each other up, man. They will. They will back each other up, even when they know they bogus as hell, man. They like, could be wrong. There's two left shoes. You give me a Man, and, and, and then the but funny they, part they, about they, it. Yeah. It's it's not it's like it, it, so we we know they like that and they wonder why people say okay it's time to abolish this system and just kind of break it down and rebuild it right but that's just one system that 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 does that it's done in healthcare too so you know what I mean we go to the hospital man and we thinking that we going in to get the help that we need man it be it be some of the same conversations going on about individuals about who they are and where they come from versus let's get these people better. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's just sad. There's no compassion. There's no empathy. Um, it's a lack of, like, care all yeah. the way around the board. Like, how can you you exert all these millions and millions of dollars to find one white girl that went missing? It's 25 white, I mean, 25 black girls went missing in the same neighborhood, and the FBI is not even called. Right. What's that tell and you? I believe you with this. Hey, What's um, man, man, man? They brought when they came to my house. They brought dogs, right? And I'm thinking there's a difference. There's the diaper dogs to look for dead people, and there's livestock dogs to look for alive people. The only dogs they brought to my house was cadaver dogs. They never brought livestock dogs, so they thought, thought my baby was dead. At my house. Mm. I was the suspect. Mm. Wow. Even after learning she wasn't here, they never put forth the effort to find her. That's heartbreaking. Now I understand you have to, you know, they let Brian's parents go. They, I think they even let him go, if I'm speaking correctly. Yeah, they let him go too. But my whole family was suspect. In the disappearance of their sister and my daughter. We were suspects, and the buck stops here. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. They never looked outside of me. Never looked outside of me. my family. But they let that boy, boy go, and his parents. That'll never happen with a black family. It didn't happen to me. Mm. Mm. No. Um, this yeah. powerful. And I'm we, we, no, no. I, I get in my feelings because. No, we don't, don't apologize, sis. Don't apologize. No, we, we, uh, we, 
we give you we give you the most praise for being able to talk about it and share it with everyone that you don't even know, you know, and stuff like that. You know, that much courage and strength. And um, yeah, man, our hearts go out and definitely in our prayers and and we definitely gonna get this out to as many as people that we can get it out to. Yeah, please share the videos, man. While we are letting our guards down in our community. You know what I mean? People are coming in and taking our loved ones, man. It ain't nothing we can do. We out here doing everything to self-destruct except make sure that we can protect everybody in our community. Because we got to be the eyes for our neighbors. Don't nobody want... Man, we shouldn't nobody have to go through this. We need to learn how to be neighbors. We need to keep a watchful eye out. Start walking dogs in our neighborhoods, man. Paying attention to what's going on because... It's a lot of young ladies coming up missing, especially from black and native communities. Um, people, period, but yes. Yeah. But, and yes, the black people don't get the love I or look. I thought in a million years that this would hit my doorstep. Man. I, I, I couldn't have guessed it. I'm telling you, never. You never know how it may hit your ex. Because you never know what could affect your life. So I can see it on TV, you know. Chicago area or Illinois area or whatever is very it's 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 very um um known for body harvesting and stuff yeah, of that nature. Body you know, harvesting, like, kidnappings. And why is that? Now that you say that, now that you say that. that's going on. What's up, bro? Let me ask this one question then. Um, kind of like, if, okay, if there was one thing that you would like to see more done of, uh, obviously it's a thousand things, but if you could give them one thing that you think would be, you know, the most important thing or the most helpful, helpful thing, what would you say, in your opinion, you think would be the most helpful thing, the most thing you want to see get done? Obviously it's all of it, but you know, if you could give us one. I, I want them to pull out all available resources when somebody reports their child missing. If it's an adult or child. No matter what color. No matter what color. 
no matter the age, if someone comes up missing, every single person that comes up missing should obtain the same resources and being found. That's right. I got you. So I got a question. I got a question for you. With all of this that's going on, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Yeah, what's your mental health like? You cry a lot? Uh, I don't do very well of taking care of self. You, you know? You like yoga? Uh, I can try it. <laughs> Yo, I think, I think yoga is extremely helpful just being able to just breathe. And it just think sometimes. I'm, I'm gonna come down there. We're gonna go do some yoga somewhere or something. Okay, my sister's game for it. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do that. You know what I'm saying? And just, yeah, I'll probably send you, you know, Jamil, get your ass over there, man. We'll do some yoga with my sister now. That's right. Straight up, cat. You know what I'm saying? We gotta, we gotta take care of each other. You know what I'm saying? We gotta take care of each other. We gotta love each other. You know what I'm saying? We got to start being neighbors for one another, man. We got to start embracing each other. Uh, and for all the guys that's running around on the streets just shooting and stuff at each other, slow down for a second and start paying attention to what's happening in your neighborhood, man, to protect the young ladies and the young men in your community. I mean, if you're going to be out there all day, be out there with a purpose. You know what I'm saying? Just don't be out there with the, with the only sole reason is to destroy yourself. Um, protect somebody's little sister, man. So protect somebody's mother. Um, protect somebody's brother, you know what I mean? Like, that's what we got to do in order for us to succeed right now because the world is against us. Man, it's always been. So it's, we got we to gotta stay together at all costs, at all, at all costs. time. Well, well, Sean, definitely want to thank you for taking your time out to uh, talk to the world today on Let's Talk About It. Uh, it. It definitely is on Facebook Live, you know, Jamil out here um, saying what's up. Um, definitely, it's a couple people, so, yeah, I just, they hear it. And once again, I just want to say, man, my, I just want to say, um, Queen, my heart goes out to you, and, you know, and, you know, you, you're strong, you know, you're, you're strong, and I, and, and, you know, I don't even, you know, that's all I can really say, because you don't know what to say to a person that, that's going through what they're going through when you ain't never been through it. Yeah. You know, so. And it's up to us. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, true indeed, we got all these different powers that be, man. We know the police department working. They've been working since 1862. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's up to us, man, to uphold the integrity of our neighborhoods and up, uh, uphold the integrity of the individuals in our neighborhoods. And it's time to start doing this. There's too many of us. My, mom, my sister just told you 25 young women went missing in her immediate surroundings. With no FBI support, what's that tell you? Can we uh, can we rely on the police to protect us in these situations? I don't think so. No, we can't. I think it's up to us to start really understanding who the fuck we are and what the fuck we supposed to do for our community. No doubt. No doubt. We're all we got. We all we got. Yeah. Well, I love you. I'm gonna see you soon. We're going to be doing some yoga meals. Go take my sister a crab, boy. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say, you stay, you stay strong and you have a nice night. Okay, you too. Make sure you work on um, self, too. Mental health is important. Yeah, yoga sis. Absolutely. Yoga sis. I right, love. Okay. I'll call you in a few minutes. Love you. Love you, too. Oh, All right, peace. Well, uh, well that let's, was, let's talk about it, man. I think that was pretty deep, man. How y'all feel, man? Yeah, that was the deep one right there. That's our. That was probably our deepest one so far. Man, almost brought far tears as, to my eyes. As far as how man. we did that, too, much respect to the queen, though, man, you know, for being strong enough to to um, express herself in times of like in times like this. Yeah, you man, know? Bad respect to the individuals that actually kept up with the story. Shared the, uh, the 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 live video like these real conversations. I know sometimes we be shucking and jiving, but today is a real conversation. We really appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, definitely stay in tune with us because we're gonna be doing this a lot and be you know it's interactive. It's an interactive. Yeah, platform. yeah, yeah. Say something. Say and we, something. We um call in Say like just call in like 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 the yeah. queen just did. 
Drop you know? your man. We'll, we'll hit your line. Mills, what's up, man? What you want to talk about, bro? We got to play, play a game in this one one time, yeah. too. You know what I'm saying? Or dominoes or something, too, while we bro, just talk about it. You know? Um, yeah. But, yeah, y'all know what's up, man. Let's, let's talk about it, man. We're going to catch up. Um, we got an N one camera, but we still going to go live. So we editing the one camera. What were yeah. we at on the battery? We good? Is it still as good? Mm-hmm. Okay, we good. So... I don't know, man. That was that was that was a hard topic, bro. We might as well sign off right here, though, because we could hold up before how we do it. Is hey, this is LTA, man. We love y'all, man. It's your boy, Doe. Man, what up, man? That's far as you, man. Y'all stay smooth. Chicago, like most big cities, has its fair share of unsolved crime, and in most of these cases, somebody saw or heard something. It could be a suspicious person, a car driving away from the scene or simply overhearing somebody talking about the case. With your help, we can put these criminals behind bars where they belong. Here in Chicago, we have too many unsolved murders. We need your help. In these cases, the police department is only as strong as the citizens that get involved. Oftentimes, all the detectives need is a tip, a start. Somebody to call in and say, I saw something. Any little information that you know can be the impetus to solve the entire case. On tonight's episode, we'll be taking a look at the missing persons case of 24-year-old Jerrica Loss. In the evening hours of August 16th, 2015, Jerrica was seen walking alone in her neighborhood of Park Forest. Unfortunately, that was the last time she was seen or heard from. Here's her story. Jerrica came home when she was two years old. Jerrica loved to sing, and she used to sing the Barney song and rock on the couch. Jerrica is funny, very sweet, very humble. The nicest person you'll ever meet, she's the total opposite of the other five of us. Has the smile that'll brighten up your day. Jerrica and her siblings are very, very close. They talk all the time. I can talk to her about anything, go to her room all the time, and we'll sit down and talk, watch TV together, laugh. She was just close. I wear my emotions on my sleeves, and she's always right there to be. Serena, don't do this. Serena, calm down. Or if I'm going through something and I may not say it, she's the first one to know. Jerrica, I always know when something is wrong with me. She's my piece of man. We'll talk about how our days went. We'll, um, talk about you know, my feelings, because I don't really let my feelings out a lot, so she'll help me with that. Talk to her about how I feel about guys and my friends, or we'll just say things that make us laugh. We go on family vacations each year, so they have conversations about growing up in the house with me and she can mimic me and my grandmother, Jerrica, can mimic us really well. Her sense of humor is out of this world. I mean, our grandmother has lived with us our whole lives, and Jerrica is the one that can imitate my grandmother like no one else can. She can tell a story and use my grandmother's voice like it's her. We just died laughing. She's just the life of the party. Jerrica was an excellent student in school. She was in special education because she has a learning disability. However, she still did well in school. She went to NIU for one year and worked the rest of the time, of course. Recently, she wasn't employed, but she was looking for work. I know that she was involved in like the church youth, so she'll go to like one of her friends' church and volunteer a lot. 
she likes to walk around and uh, look for things she can volunteer for, or she'll you know, volunteer with her friends, with other places, look for jobs and stuff, volunteer places. I've been there for everything that Jerk has been through. There hasn't been an occasion where she's done something that I haven't been there. She's just a joy. On August 18th, 2015, Chantanel Laws came to the Park Forest Police Department and reported her sister, Jerrica Laws, was missing. I met her the following day. Uh, myself and uh, a sergeant went to her house, uh, spoke with her. We went through some of Jerrica's belongings, trying to ascertain where she might be, and the investigation started from there. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. On August 18th, 2015, Chantanel Laws came to the Park Forest Police Department and reported her sister, Jerrica Laws, was missing. My 25th high school reunion was um, the weekend of her disappearance. And she was cooking. She said, oh, Mom, I hope you have a good time. I came back from the picnic. She was going for her normal walk, Jerrica walk for exercise in my neighborhood. Well, I was sleeping, so uh, I, don't, I don't really know when she left out the house. I just know I woke up about 12. I checked her room, and I'm like, she not in there. So I'm like, okay, maybe she went out with a friend. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna wait until she get home. So, you know, I'm looking out the window, and she she's still not there. So I'm like, okay, she probably spent the night over her friend house. So, you know, I'm just waiting wait till the next day. Next day, she still didn't come, and I'm like, wow, where is she? The next day, I went to work that morning, and um, I never really check her room because she always comes in. And if she's going somewhere and it's going to be out late, Jerrica will let me know. But dishes were in the sink. And I should have known that something was wrong because she never, she washed the dishes at night, never leave a dish in the sink but I went to work like a normal and started calling her after I got in and texting and didn't get a response. I was at home preparing to come up here for school and she FaceTimed me as she normally would, but I was so busy trying to get everything together. I said, I'm gonna FaceTime you back. And I never did. I said, I'll call her back. I'll go just go see her Monday, as I know, you know, I'm coming up there, I'm going to go see them. And I didn't come to see them Monday because I was so busy. When I came Tuesday, um, my other little sister, Shania, was there. And I said, where's Jerrica? And she said, she's not here. So, you know, I'm starting to get worried. And my mom, she came in the room, and she was like, you know where Jerrica is? I'm like, no. I was like, I didn't even see her when she went out. And that's, you know, we walked together. And then my mom called and she said, well, was Jerrica here when you got here yesterday? I said, I didn't come yesterday, I came today, but she wasn't there. She said, I'm gonna call the police because something's not right. The dishes are still in the sink and her purse is still on the bed. And I peeked in the room, but didn't pay attention really to anything. I just peeked in and seen she wasn't in there. That's what alarmed me because Jerrica always carried big purses everywhere and her purse her id everything was left home with the exception of her cell phone that's just not like her she is so out of her character that purse she always has that purse always i went to the police station after that you know her being 24 he said, if she doesn't want to come home, she doesn't have to. And I just kept telling him, you don't understand. She would want to come home. 
And then, of course, they asked the standard questions. Was there any history of domestic violence? Does she have a boyfriend? And he just told me he'll take the report and put her in a database. And I went back that night to let him know she still had not returned home. And I went back the next day. And that's when they came to my house. Myself and a sergeant went to her house, spoke with her. We went through some of Jerrica's belongings, trying to ascertain where she might be. Uh, we was just, you know, looking, trying to find like certain things that we can like find her, ask some friends, did they see her? Like the last person she saw was her uh, friend. They went out and had dinner at uh, Chipotle in Mad Madison, Illinois. They stopped at another high school friend's house uh, that was literally just a block away from her house. She said that she had to be back by a certain time, which was close to seven o'clock at night, because she had to go meet with someone. Her friend took her back home. She told her family member that she was going for a walk. She left, and that's the last time anyone has seen or heard from Jericho Laws. Hi, I'm Lisa Guillen from Case Files Chicago, and we like to feature your case on our show. If you know of an unsolved homicide from the Chicago area, our team wants to help you close that case. Please visit our website at www.casefileschicago.com. While you're there, you can also view our database of unsolved murders that need your assistance. Only by working together can we help solve these crimes and help heal our city. Thank you, Chicago, and stay safe. On August 18, 2015, Chantanelle Laws came to the Park Forest Police Department and reported her sister was missing. She's not a person to just leave without telling anyone. Her sister last saw her actually on August 16th. She noticed that no one had seen her, but they gave her a little extra time to see if she'd come around, and the next day is when they, they figured something was wrong and they came and made the police report. I've always been her protect. I guess I'm just waiting for her to call to say, Serena, I'm here, or anything, you know? And I'm not getting it. Maybe I should have called or called her back, told her I was coming to see her, instead of trying to just pop up. Maybe she would have stayed in that day, you know? She was kind of a list person. So she had a couple bulletin boards uh, set up with goals that she had on what she wanted to do and where she wanted to be. The room was pretty orderly. There was, there was nothing out of, the, out of the ordinary when we were looking in her property. She kept a journal, a couple of journals, and she had her book for her scriptures that she used to write. So they took some of the pages and then took her journal book and her scripture book and they took her toothbrush, and they took Jerrica's hairbrush so they can process DNA. We searched uh, for like social media. Uh, she had actually recently closed her social media account, so she didn't really have any ties on there. Uh, we did go through her computer, her emails, but there was nothing electronically that, that kind of pointed us in a direction on where she might have gone. They did um, a search with the dogs. They did a search with the drone and a door to door search in our neighborhood. They did know Jerrica. They, they knew her because she'd lived there her whole life. They knew her when she used to walk around when she was a kid, and she, now they knew her now as an adult walking around. So everyone in the area knew who she was, and uh, they were very cooperative with us. Uh, unfortunately, though, nobody could tell us where she went. We passed out flyers. We had like this little uh, candlelight vigil for her at the, um, at the park. We've called friends. We've Facebook. We've checked abandoned houses. There is a path that goes right behind her house. It's called the Old Plank Trail. It's uh, over a 20 mile trail that goes from Park Forest out into Frankfurt. So because of that, we started doing ground searches. Uh, we did ourselves a ground search. 
Uh, we utilize the system, uh, it's the Illinois Law Enforcement Alert System, uh, which is also kind of called ILEAS. Uh, we asked 20 members of their agency to come out and uh, they did a ground search for us. Uh, we utilized canine searches, uh, air searches. We had the Chicago Cook County helicopter up looking for her as well. My job come in, did two searches actually for me and um, where we had volunteers from work to come out and pass out flyers and look along the bike path and businesses and roads to see if there was any signs of her. Because we were told uh, by Malcolm that the last place they went was Chipotle before she was dropped out of the home, uh, we worked with Chipotle. We ended up getting their surveillance video. Uh, it shows her on camera at about uh, 6.03 p.m. Uh, ordering her food, and that's the last uh, time that we have her on any kind of camera. It's hard to even see a picture, picture or talk about her. Just not know where she is. It's uh, rough. It's terrifying. It's um, exhausting. I just, you know, I really want to find her, you know. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. On August 18th, 2015, Chantanel Laws came to the Park Forest Police Department and reported her sister was missing. We started by talking with the family, trying to get a list of friends, relatives that, that we could talk to that she might have gone to uh, right off the bat to uh, eliminate those possibilities. We obviously looked for surveillance cameras in the area, but it was right in the middle of the neighborhood, so we didn't locate very many uh, cameras, and the ones that we did find didn't have her on them. The searches that we did do, though, I mean, we did search the entire trail, the Park Forest area and the neighboring towns area. Uh, we also searched all the vacant properties, all the vacant houses. We searched just about every area uh, around that neighborhood that we could, we could find. I always say you see this stuff happen, and you never think it will happen to you. And now here I am, and somebody else see that was here before. As much as I don't want to talk about Jericho, don't want to look at a picture, I got to keep going and I got to keep her story out there until I know something, until she comes home. I have to do it for her, because if it was me, Jericho would be sitting here doing it for me. So I have to. It's just sad. I mean, I don't, I don't like crying. I don't like doing that, but I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to do. It's kind of sad, me waking up and she's not in the room. You know, I just, I really just want her to come home. I don't know what else to do. There's no closure. And I feel that somebody has to have, somebody had to have seen something, something, because a person just does not disappear. I can't wrap my head around that at all. There were a lot of searches that were conducted, and then the weeks and even months after, we had uh, more ground searches that were organized a lot by ComEd. Uh, because uh, Chantanel works for, for ComEd and they kind of spearheaded a couple things for us as well. There were a lot, a lot of searches done, a lot of things done. There was no stone left unturned uh, when it came to the searching for. The police department did everything initially that they could do. They did searches. They came out when we conducted our searches. They did searches with the dogs to, to see if they could get a scent. 
they went through the uh, bike path as well. They did door to door. The drones, they had them up in the air and helicopter searches. I'm confident that they did what they could initially, but I feel that because it's been a long time that they've exhausted all measures. But as a parent, you want them to do more because it's your child, you know? It's been very hard. Uh, I spent three months alone just on this case when it first came in. Uh, there were a lot of things that, that, were, that were done that are even behind the scenes that the family not aware of and that we're, we worked on. Uh, so it's been, it's been very hard, you know, just not knowing in the end. We, we did a lot with the case, a lot with the family, and we still just don't really have any answers for the family to say, you know, what might have happened to her. And obviously we, we are. The case is, is not going to be closed. Um, we, we continue to, to ask the public and ask the community for help. Uh, any kind of tips or leads that we do get, we obviously follow up on uh, anything that, that we have. And until she's found, we're going to keep looking for her. If anybody know anything about Jericho, just say it. I mean, you don't have to say your name. I don't have to say anything. I just think we so closed and not sharing things. We scared and it only take one person. It could be the littlest thing that opens up a can of something. We have nothing. And for to disappear in the middle of the day and nobody seen nothing? Think about if this was your family. You know, I try to uh, keep going, keep living. But it's really hard to live when you have a child missing. It really is. The investigation into Jarek Laws is still active. We're asking for any help that we can get from the public, the community, to go ahead and give us any kind of tips or leads that we can follow up on that can hopefully point us in a direction to where we can finally tell the family what happened to Jarek Laws. If anybody has any information uh, regarding the disappearance of Jarek Laws, they can contact the Park Forest Police Department at 708-748-748. 1309. You can ask for me, Detective Marash, or any other detective that is working to give the information. I just need her to come home. Just, I need my piece of mad back. I need to see a smile. I need to hear a voice. I just need her to come home. Why would you strip her away from her family, from the people who love her? That doesn't make sense to me. Just let her go and let her come home. The cases featured on tonight's episode remain unsolved and we need your help. If you have any information on tonight's episode or any of the cases featured on the show, please give the detectives a call. We need our communities to come together so we can take back our streets and make our neighborhoods safe again.